Hey guys, welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. This effect has been at the top of my request list for quite some time, so today I will finally show you how to create fire with your hands. Oh. Over two years ago I released a small short film where I created some fire with my hands. If you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out by clicking this link right here. Now, back then I was just getting started using After Effects, so it was literally just some stock footage of fire stuck to my thumb. Still, I got a ton of requests from all of you to create a tutorial to show you how to create this effect. Now, we're still going to attach some fire stock footage to our moving hands, but we will add a little bit more detail to try to make it look a little bit more realistic and organic. This is going to be an intermediate tutorial, so I will assume that you know the basics of After Effects like masking, adjustment layers and track mats, but I will also assume that you know how to do motion tracking in After Effects. I have a separate tutorial on motion tracking that you can check out if you've never used it before, but enough of me talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here's the clip we will be working with. As always, you can download this video via the link in the description of this video if you do want to follow along. To attach a fire element to the tip of my thumb, we will first need to track its movement. First, go back to the beginning of the clip and find the time when you want the fire to start appearing. I'd say about here is fine. I want to avoid the first few frames where my hand is still moving fast, simply because the motion blur is making my thumb too blurry and it will be hard to track. Open up the tracker controls by going to the main menu and selecting Window Tracker. Make sure your footage layer is selected and then click on the track motion button in the tracker panel. After Effects will place a new track point on your footage. Zoom in and let's place this track point right at the tip of my thumb. Let's make the inner box, the area of interest, pretty small to only track the inside of my thumb. If you include too much background around the thumb, the tracker might get confused as the hand moves around and the background does change. Since my thumb is still a little bit blurry, let's first track forward frame by frame for a little while. Yeah, notice how the track point drifts off a little bit? Simply reposition the track point back on the tip of the thumb and then track forward another frame. Do that until you see the track point follow the thumb correctly. This seems to be good now. Let's zoom out and track forward automatically. Whoa, the track point just got left behind when my thumb left the area of my shirt. But not to worry. Go back to the time when the track point was still correctly positioned on my thumb, zoom in and then reposition the track point for this frame. Move forward a single frame and reposition the track point. Move forward another frame, reposition the track point, move forward again. Keep going until the thumb is no longer so blurry from all of the motion blur. About here should be okay. Let's try to keep tracking. Yep, that seems to be working again. Zoom out and continue tracking automatically. Nice! The tracker made it almost all the way through, except for the very end of the clip where I tried to blow out the fire. Again, we could fix this up frame by frame, but you can also simply go back a little bit, adjust the track point and try to keep tracking again. Let's tweak the track point to track the entire top of my thumb, since the background won't change anymore anyways. The tip of my thumb should be pretty easy to follow for the tracker. Let's also make the search area a little bit larger and let's keep tracking forward. Nice, that worked perfectly. The track point follows the tip of my thumb precisely throughout the entire shot. Well, again, except for a few frames at the beginning that we left out. But again, that is super easy to fix. Simply go to the first frame you tracked and start tracking backwards. For the few frames where the track point fails to follow the thumb correctly, simply fix them up manually frame by frame. It's just a handful anyways. And we're done with tracking. If you now play this clip back, you will see the track point follow my thumb throughout the entire video from the moment we want the fire to appear until I blow it out. We now need to apply this tracking data to a null object, so create a new null object. I will call mine Thumb Null. Return to the tracker panel and click on the Edit Target button to ensure that the motion target is set to our new Thumb Null object. Close this window and then click on, well, if you can't see the apply button in your tracker panel, you probably just have to make it a little bit larger and there we go. Click the apply button to apply the tracking data onto the thumb null object. We now have a null object in our scene that follows the movement of my thumb throughout the entire shot. 
And with that, we are ready to create some fire. I'm going to use a fire element from the Actions Essentials 2 stock footage pack called Torch Windy 2. Take your fire element and drag it onto the new composition icon to, well, create a new composition. I'm also going to move this composition out of my stock footage folder just because I'm a neat freak. We have created a new composition that contains our Torch Windy 2 fire element and I'd say it looks pretty cool all by itself. However, during the second half of the clip, the fire is probably a little bit too erratic for what we want to use it for, so let's trim it down to only the first half, when the fire is still nice and straight. We also need to shorten the composition to the new duration of the fire layer, and while you can move the work area and marker manually, you can simply position your timeline indicator at the end of the layer and press N. Then right click onto the work area and select Trim Comp to Work Area. We end up with a composition that contains only nice and straight fire ready to go onto my thumb. However, this clip is only a couple of seconds long and that means we will have to loop it. But if we loop it, you can see that every time it wraps around, there's a noticeable jump in the fire animation. Visual effects is all about having a good eye for details, so let's smooth out that transition. This is actually really simple. Duplicate the layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. Then trim the top layer down to only the first three frames. Now trim off those exact three frames from the bottom layer. Move the top layer to the very end of the composition. We will fade these three frames in towards the end of the clip so that the last frame will match seamlessly onto the first frame of this composition. To do that, select both layers and reveal the opacity property by pressing T. Then add a keyframe just as the top layer starts. Animate the top layer to fade in from 0 to 100% and animate the bottom layer to fade out from 100 to 0% opacity. This will create a smooth cross-fade transition between these two layers and while it's not perfect, it will cover up the jump in the fire animation. Finally, since we have a gap at the beginning of our composition, let's trim it down. If you now play this clip back, it should loop around nicely. Before we attach this fire to my thumb, notice how the fire gets cut off at the top of the composition a little bit. Let's fix that up by applying a mask around the main area of the fire. Feather the mask out a little bit so that there is no harsh edge where we cut off the top. I'm also going to check whether the top layer gets cut off, but nah, we should be good. The last thing we need to do is to shrink down the resolution of this composition. It has been created with the same resolution as the fire element, which means this composition is a full 720p. However, once we add the fire element to my thumb, it will be fairly small, so let's reduce the overall resolution of this composition to maybe 480 by 270 and let's also rename it to thumb fire comp. Hit OK, then select both layers and scale them down. The reason we're making this composition smaller is simply to make rendering faster. Let's check the composition one last time. Cool! I'd say we're ready to attach this fire to my thumb. Return to the main composition where we track the movement of my thumb. Drag the thumb fire comp we just created into this composition. Now you will notice that the layer is way too short. We will have to loop it to extend the animation and make the fire last for as long as we need to. For this we will use the time remapping and I have covered time remapping already in a separate tutorial if you want to check that out. To enable time remapping, simply select the thumb fire comp layer, right click and go to time, enable time remapping. Before we can loop this clip, there's one thing to be aware of. The end frame that got automatically created by the time remap effect sits on the first frame after the fire layer has ended. In order to loop this layer properly, we need to create a keyframe on the last visible frame so that the video loops without a gap. For that, simply go to the last visible frame of the thumb fire comp layer and add a new keyframe for the time remap effect. Then delete the last keyframe on the layer, the one we don't want. To actually loop the layer, we are going to use a small expression. So alt click onto the stopwatch icon of the time remap effect. Now you can type this if you want, but I prefer to just go over to the little expression quick menu here on the left side and then go to property, loop out, type cycle. Click outside of the expression editor to apply your changes. You should now be able to extend the fire layer to any length that you want. And when you scrub through your composition, the fire will just keep on looping forever. 
To attach the file to my thumb, let's go to a time position where my thumb isn't all blurry from moving it around and zoom in. Take the fire element, shrink it down and position it as needed directly onto my thumb. About here looks good. I do like the little fire tendrils reaching down over my thumb. It just adds a little bit more realism to the effect. Finally, parent the thumb fire comb layer to the thumb null object. Zoom out and BAM! My thumb is on fire! Okay, okay, nothing to wet your pants over just yet. There's still some more work for us to do, but this is starting to come together. The first thing that stands out to me, apart from the color, is that the fire elements remain stiff and straight, even as I move my hand around. Now, imagine your thumb really was on fire. After some initial screaming, you'd probably notice that as you move your thumb around, the fire bends away from the direction you're moving in. Our fire layer just remains stiff and straight and so it looks rather unnatural. Let's zoom in a little bit here. To bend the fire, we can use the CC bender effect, so go and apply it to the thumb fire comb layer. The CC bender effect has a top and a base and we want to make sure that the top is positioned at the top of the fire and the base is positioned at the base of the fire. You can then adjust the amount property to bend the fire either to the left or to the right. Now you could keyframe this property manually throughout the entire clip to match up with your movement, but I hate manual work and since this is an intermediate tutorial, we will use a cool trick and some expressions to do all of that automatically. Select and duplicate your thumb null layer. I will call this layer thumb null delta and the reason for that will become apparent in a moment and assuming you still remember your math. Take the thumb null delta layer and offset it to be two frames earlier than the thumb null layer. If you scrub through your clip, you should now have two null objects moving around, one chasing the other. What is great about this setup is that we can use the distance between these two null objects to calculate the speed at which my thumb is moving. Right here in this frame, my thumb is moving pretty fast and so the distance between the thumb null and the thumb null delta is pretty big. A few frames later, my thumb is fairly stationary and so the distance between these two null objects is very small indicating very little movement. We will use the difference of the X positions of these two null objects to control the amount property of the CC bender effect. This will cause the fire to bend automatically based on the speed at which my thumb is moving. For this, select both null objects and make sure you reveal their position properties by pressing P. Then select your thumb fire comp layer and alt click onto the stopwatch icon for the amount property in the CC Bender effect to add an expression. Now this is tricky. Take the pick whip icon next to the expression editor and drag it onto the X coordinate for the thumb null object. Then edit the expression and enter minus and then with the cursor still in the expression editor, select the pick whip icon again and this time drag it onto the X coordinate for the thumb null delta object. Click outside of the expression editor to apply the changes and if we now scrub through the composition, we will see that the fire bends as I move around. However, I think the effect isn't strong enough, so go back to the expression editor and wrap the entire expression in brackets. Then add star 2, which means multiply by 2, to the end of the expression to double the amount that will be applied to the CC bender effect. If you play this clip back now, you will see the fire bend organically as I move my thumb around. It's a subtle change, but it makes a huge difference to the realism of this effect. Let's quickly fix up the color of the fire and add some glow before we get onto the lighting. I will quickly collapse all of the chaos in my composition by selecting all layers with Ctrl A and then pressing U on my keyboard to close all open properties. Did I mention I'm a neat freak? Search for the hue and saturation effect and apply it to the thumb fire comp layer. I'm going to bring down the master saturation by a fair bit and maybe push up the master lightness to make the fire element appear a little bit brighter. Then search for and apply a glow effect to the layer. I'm just going to jack up the glow radius and bring down the glow threshold to give the fire element a nice strong glow. Hmm, maybe I'll jack up the intensity just a little bit while we're at it. Let's have a look at what we have so far. Hmm, I think I'll make the glow radius just a little bit bigger. Now let's play this back. Pretty cool! However, something doesn't quite feel right. And it's the motion blur. When working with any visual elements that move, it is important to enable motion blur on all of those layers 
as well as on the composition. This will do a great deal to making the visual elements blend in much more naturally with the rest of your footage. Check out how much better the fire looks now. Before we move on to the last part, which is the lighting, I want to quickly make the fire layer start and end to match our footage. For that, go back to the beginning of the video where you want the fire to start. I want the fire to start right here as I ignite it with my thumb. Trim down the beginning of the thumb fire comb layer to start at exactly that frame. Then zoom in and, using the pen tool, draw a mask around the top part of the fire element. Open up the mask properties by pressing M and change the mask mode to subtract. As always, feather it out a little bit to get rid of the hard edge of the mask and enable keyframes on the mask path property. Now step through the first few frames where we want the fire to appear and animate the mask to move upwards to reveal the flame. Let's play this back and check out how it looks. Cool, I like it. Finally, let's do the same with the end of the clip where I blow out the flame. Since we already have a subtractive mask on the thumb fire comb layer, I will simply reuse it. Important, add one keyframe to the mask path property with the mask still way above the flame. Otherwise the mask will slowly creep downwards during the duration of the video. Then move forward frame by frame and have the mask come in slowly from underneath the fire to extinguish it. Once the fire is out, we no longer need this layer, so trim down the end of the thumb fire comb layer. If we play this back now, it looks like the fire gets blown out. Awesome! The last step to completing this effect is to create the actual lighting that is being cast by the fire. The first thing to do is to duplicate your base footage. Let's rename this layer to lighting. Now a very simplistic way would be to simply set the blend mode of this layer to add and use a pen tool to add a mask around the area of the fire. This however doesn't look very refined or interesting. Instead, let's have the fire cast light only onto me and not onto the background to make it a bit more exciting. Delete the mask again and change the blend mode of the layer back to normal. To have the light only affect me and not the background, we need to cut me out from the lighting layer. Now you could use the pen tool and an animated mask for that, but that would take forever. Another option is to use the roto brush tool to do the exact same thing, but even that could take a pretty long time. There is however another way. It does not work in all situations, but when it does, it's a great time saver. We will use the difference matte effect to separate me from the background. What I have here is a still image of the same scene without me in it. Drag this image to the very bottom of the composition so it's not in the way. Then search for the difference matte effect and apply it to the lighting layer. Go to the effect settings and set the difference layer to the background layer we just added. Hmm, nothing happened. Well, stuff actually did happen, but we still have the other layers visible below our lighting layer and so it just looks like nothing happened. Disable the visibility of the footage layer and the background image and BAM! The lighting layer now only contains me and not the background. The difference matte effect will compare two layers and remove all pixels that are the same. You literally will only see the difference between the two, hence the name. Now you will notice that there is still a bit of an ugly white line around me. This is an artifact of the difference matte effect since it determined that those pixels are different between the two layers and therefore it decided to keep them. One way to fix up unclean edges is to use the refine matte effects. Search for and apply the refine soft matte effect to the lighting layer. Already looks much better. However, the refine soft matte effect has eaten away a little bit too much around the edges. We can easily reel the effect back in by reducing the additional edge radius property. Let's try a value of 2. Cool, I have an actual outline again and it looks a lot cleaner. I think I'll actually increase the additional edge radius to 3 to get rid of a little bit more of the white outline that I can still see. It may not be perfect, but we also did not have to spend hours rotoscoping. To make the lighting layer stand out from our base footage, let's tweak the base footage to look like it was a night shot and so the lighting will cut me out of the darkness. For this, unhide the base footage layer and disable the visibility of the lighting layer. Search for and apply a hue and saturation effect to the base footage. Go over to the effect settings and drastically reduce the master saturation as well as the master lightness. Then apply a curves effect to the layer. Go over into the blue channel and push it up a fair bit to tint the entire clip. Actually, I think I will bring down the master lightness a little bit more so the lighting stands out even stronger. If you now reveal the lighting layer, you can see how much clearer I will stand out 
from where the light of the fire reaches me. Now we only want the lighting layer to be visible around the area of the flame and the easiest way to do this is to use a track mat. Let's close down the lighting layer properties and create a new solid. I'm going to create a white solid and I will call it lighting mat. Make sure this layer is a fair bit larger than the size of your composition. I'm going to go with 3000 by 1600 and a bit. Make sure the lighting mat layer sits directly above the lighting layer. Then go and grab the ellipse tool and draw a circular mask around the flame on my thumb. Open up the mask settings and feather it out by quite a lot to make the reach of the lighting nice and smooth. Finally, parent the lighting mat layer to the thumb null object. This will cause the white area of the lighting mat to follow the fire attached to my thumb. Go over to the lighting layer directly below and set the track mat option to alpha. Bam! It looks like the flame is casting light directly onto me. Pretty cool. We just have to fix up the beginning and the end of this composition. Let's do the beginning first. Go to where the fire starts to appear from the tip of my thumb. Animate the opacity property of the lighting mat layer to fade in just as the fire becomes visible. Cool. Then go to the end of the composition where I blow out the fire. Animate the opacity of the lighting mat layer to fade out just as the flame goes out. That should do. The very last tweak I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a flicker to the lighting. We will do this by applying a simple wiggle expression to the opacity of the lighting mat layer. Alt click onto the stopwatch icon next to the opacity property and in the expression editor enter wiggle open bracket 4 comma 15 close bracket. This will cause the light to flicker slightly giving it a much more realistic appearance. Now all that is left to do is go back to the beginning of the composition and play back the final fire hands effect. And that is how you can create fire with your hands or any other body part for that matter. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them in the section below. Please remember to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button up there. Hit that like button and share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And as always, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.